Hello, Hell Science 4502. This is the continuation, uh, the second video. So this is the video for September 2nd, which is going to give you information on mixtures and modified occupational exposure limits. Uh, and again, I, I know this is a challenge doing this online. I, I wish I was in front of you with a whiteboard being able to write this stuff up and uh, show you calculations and things of that nature, which is why we're going to focus on the uh, the calculations that are most beneficial for you, and, and that'll make more sense as we get to the end of this lecture. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into um, lecture 2.2, essentially, which is for September 2nd. So with mixtures, we're dealing with um, the potential biological effects of mixed um, components that are independent. So you really do have a tendency to see this occur. Um, so for instance, uh, most of the time you're not dealing with a, you know, with a pure gas. You're going to have uh, carbon monoxide and oxygen and all these things simultaneously occurring. So these are going to be the mixtures that we're going to be talking about. So if you look at slide 18 on lecture 2, um, when you're talking about mixtures, uh, you essentially have concentration divided by the threshold limit value for a substance and this is going to give you a ratio. So if a ratio is less than one, uh, the combined exposure is less than the threshold limit value. If the ratio is greater than one, the combined exposure exceeds the threshold limit value. So this is a way to, to be able to try to figure out uh, calculations in regard to mixtures. So that's generally going to be what you're going to be working with is a mixture of gases uh, or you know any you know any variable therein. So um, certainly that's that's what we're going to be discussing here is that mixture of values associated with the concentration. So uh, where C C1 or CI depending on how you read it uh, is equal to the measured time weighted average concentration. So what is the um, time weighted average concentration? And that's going to be um, divided by the threshold limit value for a substance. So um, C, C1 over T1 is going to give you that ratio, less than or greater than 1. And that's going to give you information in regard to the threshold limit value. Am I exceeding the threshold limit value? And we'll talk a little bit about the, those calculations, but essentially fairly straightforward. Uh, generally, you're going to be working with a, um, an air sampling device, and it's going to say, okay, here's what you have. Uh, your concentration uh, for this time-weighted average substance is X, and your threshold limit value, T, uh, will, will be existing already in documentation. You can find that in NIOSH pocket manuals and things like that. So T is going to be something that you know and C is going to be the measured concentration that's coming from your air sampling device. So that's how you're going to look at mixtures. Uh, on to slide 19, continued. So if the biological effects of the mixture are additive, which generally they, they're going to be um, additive, you're going to have uh, multiple concentrations. Um, so essentially what you're going to end up with is C1 over T1, plus C2 over T2, so concentration 1 over concentr uh, over um, time, uh, threshold limit value 1. So, I'm sorry, concentration, let me slow down. Concentration 1 over threshold limit value 1 plus concentration 2 over threshold limit value 2 plus on and on and on. So, um, the CN is going to be the um, measured time-weighted average concentration, and then TN, threshold limit value for the uh, substances. So it just keeps going on. So this is additive. So generally, you're going to be looking at between 2 and 20 different concentrations, and each one of those would be added into this mix. And then um, your answer, K, uh, would be that ratio. So if, if, if it's less than one, uh, the combined exposure is less than the, the um, threshold limit value. If the ratio is greater than one, the um, combined exposure exceeds the, the threshold limit value. So fairly straightforward, um, but you know, generally uh, something that, um, you know, if I was in class, we'd be able to kind of work through some of these, but you kind of get the idea. You really need a, an air monitoring system to, to be able to walk through these things. And I, I may try to rough out some sample problems for these, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. If you take the two concentrations, 
um, and you, you put them over your threshold limit value for the substances that you're, you're dealing with and their concentrations, um, you're going to have, you know, that ratio that's going to appear in less than or greater than one. And, and that's going to be K that you're going to end up with. So with interpretation, uh, biological effects of a mixture are um, synergistic. Um, hazards have to be determined individually. So if they're additive, you can use the formula for additive mixtures, but generally that's not going to be the case. So um, synergistic effects are going to be, you know, a, a lot, well, potentially greater than, you know, the, obviously the additive effects. So when there is a synergistic effect, you have to take each and every one of those concentrations over their threshold limit value and do them simultaneously. Well, not simultaneously, but you have to do them individually and make comparisons. So is my exposure to carbon monoxide exceeding my threshold limit value uh, when it's mixed with O2 uh, or sulfur dioxide and O2? So if I'm, if I'm working with all three of those concentrations, uh, because there's a synergistic effect, they have to each individually be generated themselves. And then if there's an antagonistic effect, there are no guidelines. Uh, so you definitely want to do them uh, individually when you're interpreting these values. So if there is a synergistic effect, obviously you can't use that additive formula. So with unusual work schedules, and we're kind of, kind of we're going to kind of get into um, how you do some of these calculations a little bit. Uh, but with unusual work schedules, some people may work more than an eight-hour day. They may exceed a forty-hour work week. So you have to make adjustments based on those. So as you remember, with with OSHA's guidelines, they're based on an eight-hour work work week, and certainly um, those are the things that we're going to be looking at in regard to any you know potential. Um, issues for calculations, uh, but again, you know, there are work weeks that are abnormal, and how do you factor for that? And generally, the rule of thumb is to make sure that you are protecting your workers at all costs. So if you're dealing with a um, threshold limit value that is at a certain, you know, a certain value, uh, and you're working a 10-hour day, you really want to assume that two hours of that day are not not exposed to that um, hazardous substance, that concentration, that potentially dangerous concentration. So uh, adjustments generally are not necessary. Uh, if the goal of the exposure limit is to avoid excessive irritation or odor or things like that, or the biological half-life life of the toxicant is less than three hours or more than 400 hours for obvious reasons. Um, you know, and certainly, uh, when it comes to excessive irritation, odors, things like that, uh, we don't have to make uh, these adjustments for these unusual work schedules. So uh, again, uh, adjustments to the um, threshold limit values may be needed to apply uh, the threshold limit values when work schedules are markedly different from the eight hour and the 40 hour week. So when you have these huge adjustments, um, you know, like say for instance you work a 10 hour day, you have to make adjustments accordingly and you'll actually see some calculations at the end of, of this presentation as we kind of move through it. This is kind of the, the, the challenge, so I cut this one a little bit shorter. This video will be a little bit shorter just so you have a chance to kind of, kind of start looking at how some of these things are calculated. So um, guidance, if the goal of the occupational exposure limit uh, is to minimize the likelihood of a systemic effect, the concentration to which persons can be exposed should be less than the threshold limit value if they work more than an eight hour day or more than 40 hours a week and the chemical has a half life between four and 400 hours. So if it does exist in those parameters, then the goal is really to make sure that the occupational exposure limit uh, is gonna be uh, minimized as best as possible uh, for the likelihood of avoiding those systemic effects on individuals that are working. So that, that's something that you really want to take into consideration, that you're obeying and respecting the occupational exposure limits, specifically when it comes to permissible exposure levels, those PELs, okay? So if the biological half-life is unknown, then you use a safe level that can be estimated by assuming that the chemical has a biological half-life of about 20 hours. So again, if, if you're working with a substance that you do not know its half-life, 
uh, in the in in any given atmosphere, any given environment, um, you want to make sure that you uh, err on the side of precaution, which is essentially what these slides are saying. And this is generally going to yield a very conservative adjustment factor, um, 10, 12, or 14 hour work days. Uh, so you know when you're working with half lives. Uh, these are things that when you're making considerations for 10, 12, 14 hour work days, it allows you to do so. Now I'm going to say this up front, uh, the calculations that I'm going to give you are not going to be dealing with half lives. Uh, there is one calculation at the very end that I'm not going to make you suffer through because this is already painful enough. So you're generally not going to be dealing with half lives when you're, you're doing anything in, in the... Um, uh, realm of occupational exposure. Uh, they want they want to be precautious, so they're generally going to be working with um, uh, OSHA guidelines for making calculations with permissible exposure limits. Can that be any more? That's got to sound as clear as mud. So uh, on to slide 24. Uh, when we're adjusting occupational exposure limits, um, there are three models, and these are for making adjustments for eight, 10, 12 hour days really for 10, 12, 14 hour exposures, things like that. If you're working with eight hours, you're really gonna be able to um, deal with the standard information that comes from the NIOSH pocket guide that you can find online. You can find information online in regard to uh, what the PEL for any given chemical is. So if you have to adjust and make adjustments to those variables, um, you're gonna work with three models. And this is on slide 24. You have the OSHA model, you have the brief and scala model, and then you have the Hickey and race model. Okay, so uh, here's the deal, all right? The OSHA model is the only thing I've ever used. The brief and scala model, I like it, it works very well. It's fun to know, it's good to know in case you're ever on Jeopardy. The Hickey and race model works well if you're dealing with half-lives, but for the purposes of this class, I'm not gonna have you learn the Hickey and race model. I'm not gonna make you test on it. Uh, if you really want to challenge, you can work through um, the calculations at the end and, and kind of mess around with it. See if you come up with the same answer. If you have questions, let me know. So we're going to move into the models. Uh, slide 25, the OSHA model. So you have the modified uh, permissible exposure level. Uh, so you're going to have the PEL, the permissible exposure level, is going to be multiplied by a, um, a, a eight hour shift on the top and the time in hours below that so you're gonna have a fraction right so the numerator is going to be eight hours and your uh, denominator is going to be time in hours so obviously the time is going to be greater than eight hours for this OSHA model so if you're gonna have a modified permissible exposure level based on the number of hours that a person is working you're gonna take the permissible exposure level and you're gonna multiply that times the, um, the, the fraction that uh, is eight hours over the actual time in hours, okay? And that's gonna be very simple. Uh, should not be a problem for you to make this calculation. And this is the OSHA model. This is the primary model, and it's really straightforward. So again, I, I'm gonna try and figure out how to plug in some questions for your exam. Uh, that will have some very rudimentary calculations uh, in regard to the OSHA model, and uh, but I'm not going to make you do the race model. Okay, so this is the OSHA model, pretty straightforward. And again, you know, I, I want you to understand this. If you're doing a modified permissible exposure level, you're going to have the the pre-existing permissible exposure level, and you're going to multiply that times uh, the numerator of eight hours and the denominator of time in hours, and that's the OSHA model. So onto the brief and scala model, uh, this is going to be for um, generating modified threshold limit values, which is different. This is not a permissible exposure level. This is going to be a modified uh, threshold limit value. So you're going to work more than 10 hours. Uh, what is my threshold limit value for that 10 hours? And so the modified threshold limit value for the brief and scala model is going to be calculated as follows. So it's going to be equal to eight hours over the time in hours, uh, this is gonna be your first fraction, so you're gonna have eight hours over the time in hours, and that's gonna be multiplied by uh, 24 hours minus the, the, the number of hours that the individual is working over 16 
times the threshold limit value. And that's going to give you the brief and scala model modified threshold limit value. And this is going to tell you, you know, don't exceed this threshold limit value for your workers over this period of time. So if you're working um, 10 hours or 12 hours, it will give you that threshold limit value time weighted average. So uh, in, in any given amount of time, you should never exceed uh, that threshold limit value. And that's what I encourage. You know, I encourage you to uh, keep your workers safe and to consider the threshold limit value uh, is something that you should never really exceed with your workers. Okay, so if you're calculating a modified threshold limit value based on a, a an adjusted number of hours that an individual is going to be working, you're going to go ahead and calculate that by um, taking eight hours over their time and hours times 24 minus their time and hours over 16 uh, times the threshold limit value. So that's the brief and scala model for generating modified threshold limit values. And and once again, listen, folks, I am not going to you know hold your feet to the fire on this stuff. Um, I've I've been working in. Um, uh, occupational management for many years and I've never actually had to do these. It's nice to know how to do them, uh, but this is really more of an academic pursuit, okay? So don't don't kill yourselves over this stuff. I, I really want you to understand that, that you can do it. It's not that hard to do, but are you going to do it? Probably not. Uh, but again, um, just in case you do need to, hang on to these. Write them down. Um, it, keep your, you know, keep your uh, blackboard up and running. That way, you can refer back to these, or just print them up and, and put them somewhere uh, in a, a three-ring binder in case you ever need to calculate modified threshold limit values or modified permissible exposure limits. Okay, so really nice stuff. Okay, so the Hickey and Race model um, is re it's it's again it's going to calculate modified threshold limit values. And because the brief and scala model already does that, the only difference here is that you're working with half-lives, uh, which are represented here in the Hickey and Race model. So uh, essentially, you're going to have 1 minus E, um, and, and that's going to be... <laughs> that's, wow. Okay. I mean, I got to tell you, the, the Hickey and Race model, if you're looking at it on slide 27 right now, I mean, you can see, right? It's a mess. I mean, you got numbers flying around all over the place. And the thing that I don't like about the Hickey and Race model is that it is so so complicated and it's dealing specifically with working with half-lives for materials where the brief and scala model is really gonna give you the exact same thing. I, I encourage you not to make estimations based on half-lives. Uh, the brief and scala model is straightforward and it's gonna give you an answer that's going to be um, conservative and is going to be beneficial to your workers. So brief and scala, in my opinion, is the way to go over the Hickey and Race model. Um, part of the reason that I'm 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 pushing my own personal agenda on this is because simply if if I asked you to even try to wade into the Hickey and Race model, I'd get a million questions on this why your answers are wrong because the formula is so complicated, it it tends to generate errors. Okay, so you can see what K you know. K is essentially going to be, you know, calculated as 0 0.04, um, and it, you know you're you're working with um, a lot of complicated math here. It really is. So E E is going to be the value of your half life. Um, it's just a lot going on in this formula. So again, I'm never going to make you calculate a Hickey and Race model question. Uh, so I just I want you to be aware of that. It's there for you if you really love math and you want to learn it. Um, look at it and then uh, you know look at the sample questions and see if you can come up with the same answer. But again, not something I'm going to test you on. Okay, so that's slide 27. If you move on to slide 28, you can actually see that there is a sample problem um, that starts with slide 28 and goes through the end through slide 31. So it's it's assuming that one to um, trichloroethane has a biologic half-life of 16 hours in people. Uh, what modified threshold limit value or permissible exposure limit would be appropriate for persons who wish to work three days, 12 hours per day for the work week. So this is going to have those, those variables associated with it because you're working less days but more hours. So how do you make these calculations for trichloroethane? 
uh, and certainly it can be um, fairly complicated. But again, if you look at uh, the solution on page 29, I'm not going to make this hard for you folks. You know, I want you to be able to look at this and go, okay, this is pretty straightforward, all right? With the modified permissible exposure limit, um, I'm going to take the, the traditional, the existing PEL, uh, multiply that times eight hours over the T of the hours that they're actually going to work, okay? So again, that was a 12-hour work week that they were hoping to work. And then you have the, um, the brief and scala model, which is the second equation. And then you have the modified threshold limit value, the third equation, which is the Hickey and Race model. And again, I, I, I would like for you to focus on the brief and scala model and the, um, the OSHA model. Okay, don't, don't, con don't confound yourselves with the Hickey and Race model. So um, slide 30 is a note in regard to Hickey and Race. Uh, for those of you that want to try and wade through it and see if you can come up with the same answer, uh, but again, not something that is, is um, really important. And then uh, question 31, uh, it addresses the exam. Um, you can disregard this slide uh, because if, if I give you the questions, um, what I'm essentially going to say is, okay, if you're calculating for uh, the permissible exposure limit, you know, here's going to be the equation, uh, what would be the answers for that. I may give you some work, like some just some general worksheets to work through some of these, but chances are I won't. Um, so give it a try on your own. Um, and if you, if you do one or two, you can forward them over to me and, and see if you got the right answer and I'll check them out. Uh, but again, uh, make sure and include all the documentation, you know, so let me know what the, um, the permissible exposure limit is. Let me know what the time weighted averages, things of that nature are before, uh, you send me just a, a raw document that has an answer on it. So, um, I, I will, I would like to look those up for you as well, just to make sure you're on the right track. But again, you can take a look at these, uh, sample questions and, um, uh, be able to make some rough calculations on these. So again, with this with this question, the OSHA PEL, the PEL, permissible exposure limit, is 10 parts per million. So you can take a look at that, do the calculations, and see if you come up with the same answer, okay? Give it a try, and if you have questions, definitely let me know. Um, I may do, uh, so f with regard to um, the lab for this, uh, I'm going to try and figure something out for you. I haven't figured it out just yet, but, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll find something and, and we'll get, uh, we'll get, we'll get something that is a relatively easy lab for you to be able to, uh, come up with, um, some good solid answers, hopefully be able to give you a little bit of practice for this and then we'll move forward. Okay. So this was the video for, uh, for really for lecture, uh, for September 2nd, but as you know, um, you know, we really kind of lump it all together uh, and I probably won't do a specific video just for the, um, the lab, but, um, we'll kind of cross that, uh, cross that bridge when we get there. So I'm going to get these videos posted for you for Monday and Wednesday, and, uh, hopefully everybody's doing great. Again, um, get your, uh, lab one over to me. Uh, that way you're, you're ahead of the game and you don't have to kind of cram all these in. Uh, so keep that in mind and uh, hopefully everybody's doing great. I know this lab was extremely confusing to try to do this over video. Uh, but again, you know, follow along with the video and the slides and hopefully that'll give you some idea. I'm not hard at the tests that I give my students. I don't want to see you suffer. I want to see you do well. And uh, certainly that is the goal for this class. So with that... Uh, I do appreciate all your, your hard work and your questions. Keep up the good work and let me know if you have any concerns. Uh, William.VanDyke at csusb.edu. Thanks. Have a great day.